four long centuries, man heard no toxin to spur him on to higher, bolder venture than that which sent him out across the vast Pacific. Across the endless sea, first ventured proud Magellan, leading his tiny caravel to sweep forever from the seas the proud old clipper ships. Great ocean liners followed. And here it seemed the saga was to end. Far off China, scarcely three weeks distant, men said half a world could surely shrink no more. Yet even as they spoke, a winged generation was moving on to the, the British from London, the French from Paris, the Dutch, the Germans from Amsterdam and Berlin were racing across two continents, bringing Europe's industry single week of the Orient's teeming market. But between the United States and China lay 10,000 miles of ocean. To meet the challenge, America must span it with a trunk line to Asia. One U.S. company, Pan American Airways, undertook to meet this challenge. Behind it already stood seven long successful years of aerial pioneering, logging 50 million flying miles that had established an unparalleled record carrying men, mail and merchandise over 40,000 miles of aerial trade routes, revolutionizing the tempo of commerce between the three Americas. On clockwise schedules, its flying clipper ships sped southward over Havana and the West Indies, across the equator and down South America's jungle-clad east coast to Rio. Up the river of silver to far-flung Buenos Aires. Westward over the mighty Cordillera of the Andes to Chile, to the land of the ancient Inca. To Panama. Central America, Mexico and the Rio Grande. 2,000 miles farther north in Alaska, its fleet airliners were replacing the Arctic dog team with the miracle of modern air transport. Now the nation's industry joined the pioneers at their task of ocean conquest. Aircraft manufacturers, designers, artisans, labored to bring forth huge winged clipper ships. Engineers, technicians, scientists, and a score of allied industries developed tremendous power plants, propellers, a hundred instruments. Pan American turned the Caribbean into a working laboratory in which to prove men, methods, and materials. Veteran pilots of airplanes became captains of ocean airliners, masters of celestial navigation, of seamanship. Others became flying engineers to man the power plants, meteorologists to wrest from the skies the secret of ocean weather. Still others perfected radio until it could span an entire ocean with its guiding signals. Ahead into the Pacific went an army of young Americans to build air bases thousands of miles apart across a trio of almost unknown dots on the ocean's map. A million items, over 6,000 tons from the holes of the North Haven, 10-ton diesel electric plant, delicate instruments of only a few ounces, food, fuel, lumber, pipe, all the necessities of a modern community poured forth onto pounding barges through lashing surf over uncharted reefs into lagoons which scarcely a score of men had ever laid eyes upon. Carpenters, cooks, plumbers, electricians, steel workers, Dynamiters, doctors, diesel motormen, all masters not of one trade, but of many, hand-picked for the expedition. First they tackled tiny Midway, then 1,200 miles further into the Pacific, Wake Island. Blistering sun and shifting sand, sharp coral and blinding glare. Scrub to be cleared. City planning, surveying, footings to be sunk and sawed, pipelines, power lines, sewers, machine shops, and refrigerators. Accommodations for construction gangs and ground crews. Hotels for eventual passengers. With all the aids of modern machinery, most of the work was done by sheer manpower. Large cistern tanks for the precious water supply. Even an improvised railroad. Lagoons blasted clear of treacherous coral heads. 
even floats and docks, offices and hospitals, direction finders and beacons from deserted coral strands to 20th century communities. While bases were still building, trailblazing clippers began to move across the ocean path. Careful surveys, flight after flight. First to Hawaii. Then, where no airman had ever ventured, westward to Midway, to Wake, to Guam. Finally, bases completed. And the first of the new built clippers waiting at her slip in San Francisco. A few brief moments of contrast. A pioneer of one age fitting Godspeed to the vanguard of another. A few moments for mail, for messages of goodwill bound halfway around the world. 3 p.m., November 22, 1935, the China Clipper rising from the waters of San Francisco Bay with the first United States air mail bound for China. miles out of San Francisco. The Clipper is bucking strong headwinds and approaching predicted storm front. Ocean time, midnight. Captain reports routine order aboard ship. Effortless precision that thrilled a watching world. On to Midway, Wake, and Guam. Into her base at Manila. In all the stirring history of the great Pacific, there can be no more thrilling chapter. The China Clippers sail again.